Welcome back to Apex Alchemy. Today I get to say goodbye to one of my grail knives. Um, sometimes you don't know a grail knife's a grail knife until you actually have it. And that's just the way it works for me. Because the word grail knife means different things to different people and I respect that. Like To some people it's the unobtainable knife. But this is the Grayman Satu. I didn't know anything about the Grayman Satu until I really got one. You know, or really I guess until Dave loaned me one. And I realized that it's a badass knife and I need it in my life. But unfortunately, man, not really unfortunately, but I've just come to realize that around that eight and a half inch territory is my perfect carry. So this knife gets skipped up a lot. So I'm trading it back to Dave, the Sadie 15, by the way, just to, uh, you know, compare it to it's about an eight and a half inch knife. This is around 10. So uh it's a great knife uh there's nothing wrong with the satu it's a it's a in fact there's a lot of positives about it it's it, it's an ox but it's just not something i'm gonna carry all the time and i've come to realize that uh kind of with the uh code steel 4 max you know is pretty much the same story i really I, I got into the bigger knives there for a little while and they're really cool they're fascinating they're it's not just a novelty there's just something about having this much knife to hold on to and to be able to do work and stuff it there's there's definitely a place for them so today i just want to you know make this last video with the satu and it's called i guess it's going to be called well you know what it's called because you see it on the screen so we won't even cover that but um we gonna talk about some grail knives and what they mean to me so yeah a grail knife is something that's not easily attained because it's either out of production or uh, perhaps it's a knife that you have to save up for for a while because it's expensive uh, or I don't know I mean whatever it means to you is cool with me but to me it's it's uh it's whoa like okay I see what's going on here um, regardless of the availability you know uh, like these knives aren't really all that available they're not uh they're not they're not in production they're canceled or they're uh, discontinued sorry uh you know so they're discontinued knives and uh they're they're not making them anymore this one actually does have satu dave's titanium backspacer in it uh so he'll be getting that back as well and it's one of the full time models and i definitely think that you should experience one of these things before um you quit collecting knives you know like if you if you ever have the opportunity to get one of these things in your hand, just, just for a little while, um, whether you buy it or not, if you just borrow it or whatever, uh, check this knife out if you get a chance to. Grayman Satu, Arizona custom, uh, custom knife maker. Uh, only fixed blades now. Uh, it's him and his wife. And they, they make some wonderful knives. Uh, they also made a couple of uh, other folders, the Dua and the... Taya? Man, that ain't gonna be right. But it's it's Tiga. Tiga. T I G A and the D U A. And those are both different size and very similar in style to the Satu. Uh so anyway, Grand and Satu. Number one grail grail knife that I think you should check out if you get an opportunity to. This is a stout knife. We'll stick it over here to the side and we'll go to number two. So the second knife I'm gonna bring up. Is uh, it's also another discontinued model. It's called the Magnum Works Pantheon. Now, this knife, Dave told me whenever I, I did get this knife from Dave, um, that's going to be a theme with most of the knives in this video. Uh, what the theme will be is every one of these knives I've gotten from friends. But Dave told me when he got this knife, it was plagued full of problems. And he's had to do a lot of different things to it to, to turn it into the knife that it is today. Um, and I carried it. He reground it to hollow ground. I carried it for a little while. I carried it last week. And I like it. Like, it's also, it shares a lot of the same, similar. you know, like it's it's got an excellent pivot on it. it great action. Uh, it's got some scratches in the, in the titanium. That really don't bother me. But I may... I mean, get some sandpaper and, and try to smooth that out or some, some copper, uh, like a one of those Brillo pad type things or whatever. 
with the magnum marks. This is frame locked, full titanium, and A2 steel. So I think this is the first knife that I've, I've ever had an A2 steel. And uh, this one's called the Pantheon, and it's uh, the Chief model. So we'll get that to the side and bring out number three. Number three, Hinder XM18 3.5. This model does have the forward finger choil and the flipper. It is a try away knife. And I definitely feel like you should try one. You know, if you've, uh, they might not be for you. I don't know. I mean, you know, like, really? I don't, um, you know, I carried it for uh, about a week alongside that Magnum Works, and uh, I do, I do like it, but I, honestly, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm easy to please, I suppose, so like the ZT560 is just as cool to me. I'll have a video on that coming up very soon, but the Hinderer, if it's not an XM18, maybe a um, XM24 or Project X, Try try a hinderer, you know, like put the, put a hinder on your list to try out. Like I said, whether you buy it or not, don't take my suggestions on that. But this is a very comfortable knife, and it is one thing I can say to you about the the hinderer versus the ZT is, man, that blade is not moving at all. It is solid as a rock. This knife is extremely solid, and. Um, you saw me uh, fell it a couple times. I had my hand on the the, um, the lock bar, but this this knife is built like a tank, no doubt. It's it's a small tank, but it's built like a tank for sure. But I'm enjoying this one. It's got the bands on there right now. We do have the phosphor bronze and the Teflon washers. I haven't tried it, tried those setups, but this is the battle battle black version. And uh, I do like it. Get an opportunity, check one of them out. I don't think you'll be disappointed. They got them in all kinds of different steels. I believe Magna Cut's on the roster now as well. This is 20 CV. Sharp as shit. Very sharp knife. I believe Satu Dave got this one from uh, Zach, if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> I believe this came from Zach. Um, one thing I did not do with the Magnum Works Put it up against the AD15. So there's that precise comparison. It's about, just about the same size, not quite. Both of them do have a three and a half inch blade somehow. Yeah. But yeah, it's just a little shorter. But AD15 out of the way. Get a chance, check out a hinder. It's a grail knife to me. All right, so the Magnum works. I'm gonna go back to that. Just to show you, there's the AD15. So you can see, if you know, <clears throat> if you know much about my carry style, you you probably know that the AD15 is is about perfect for me. That and the shop is right, and the shop is and the AD15 are really close in size to the Magnum Works. The Magnum Works is probably a little thicker, you know, in the body yeah quite a bit actually I haven't done a standalone video on either one of these but <clears throat> or on this magnum works yet but it's it's, it's it's a thick boy it is a little thicker than the AD15 as well it feels very good in hand I love the, the rock pattern all these pantheons were different like this one's got a rock pattern even on the on the spine of the blade Excellent jimping. Great pivot. Anyway, we're supposed to be moving away from that. That is probably the hardest knife to find that I will have on this list. But it's going to be between the, uh, this and the Satu. I, you notice I keep on doing that. It's because these thumb studs are so huge. You actually got to put your index finger on the pivot if you want to reverse flick it and not stop. You know, not you know, not you're not not let your finger get in the way of, of opening the knife, but it it thumb flips just fine too. Okay, uh, off the magnum mark. Sorry about that. So the uh, next knife, of course, is a uh, a Chris Reeve and Kosi 
I also got that from Mr. Satu Dave. So like, see, you see the theme, uh, this knife and every other knife that you've seen, aside from the, the size comparison knives I've gotten from Dave. Uh, this is in Kosi and S45VN. And uh, it, man, you gotta, you gotta put a Chris Reeve in your hand at some point. You know, you don't, you don't have to love it. And you don't, it doesn't have to be the perfect knife for you. It's not the perfect knife for me, but it's, it's a, you know, it is, it is a good knife for sure. And I, I don't regret um, getting this knife. And I, and I really suck at flipping this thing while I'm trying to do it in front of a camera. So sorry about that. But like when I get it out of my pocket, it doesn't seem like it's that, uh, you know, it's that much of a chore. But the Nkosi, I really enjoyed messing around with. And I've, uh, I've had some trade offers and I've, <clears throat> I've weighed them out, you know, and, and I've, I've, I have, made, you know, taken into consideration trading this for something else. And I may in the future, I don't know. I like to get an edge on there first, like a really good edge. I may have to send it to Lacey or something to, to get that done. But because I, I spent about two or three hours on that, on that sharpening stone and I didn't get anywhere. But then Kosi or Chris Reeve of some flavor. The ground knife number four that I think you should check out. Last but not least, you know anything about the channel? You know what I'm flipping out here, right? And that is a Spark Macrobus. And I will have to say that this is likely I got I picked this up from Nick Edward at Behind the Edge. It's an S35 VN with the carbon fiber overlay. It's pretty much a frame lock because these overlays aren't really part of the body. Like the pivots don't go through them. So, you know, it kind of, it operates much like a Chris Reeve. You know, it's, it's like it's, it's a frame lock. And check this out. You see, like see the similarities. Like this frame may be just a tad bit thicker than that frame lock. Both of them's got the, the cutout underneath. I believe Magnum Works had that as well. Uh, it did, yeah. And anyway, so it's it operates like a, a Chris Reeve, and it's about the same size as a Chris Reeve, large Chris Reeve, of some flavor. Not crazy about this pocket clip. If there was any, I, like I don't mind the design of the pocket clip, but it, it if there was one complaint I have, I said this pocket clip. It's like it's so slick between the pocket clip and the carbon fiber that this thing is slide out of your pocket really easy. And go back and watch that video. I lost a five hundred dollar knife, and this was the knife that I was referring to. Um, my duffel bag, the netting and the mesh on my duffel black bag, like the this pocket clip just went right through it. And as I was lifting the duffel bag up, and thank God it hung on for dear life. So that's where I wound up finding it, but. For that reason and that reason alone, I passed this knife up quite a bit. If it weren't for that, if it stayed in my jeans, if it was a little bit more secure, this would likely be my favorite knife that I own. And that's no bullshit. Like, outside of the pocket clip, I'm not too crazy about the carbon fiber. You know, it's just this, this is aesthetics because the carbon fiber doesn't hurt anything being there. But, like, if it was titanium, some sort of uh really i mean hell aluminum <laughs> still like i really wouldn't give a shit like something else uh and, and i may try to f try to make something you know or, or find something uh make go with some my carter or something like that and just try to see what i can come up with but um or maybe some grippier g10 maybe you know something like that you know just uh, cut out some patterns and, and and put them in but uh other than that man you know like this is to me this is more of a knife than the Nkosi. I, when I say more, I'm not saying like it's better. It's just more more me than the Nkosi. It's more like, it, man, get it in hand. I think it's a little thicker. It is. It's because of these overlays, it is a little thicker. So it feels the hand a little bit better. And it's really got the same kind of amenities as... In Kosi, but then Kosi is a hollow grind and this is a flat grind. 
yeah, flat all the way down. It's not very thick behind the edge, and I do prefer it over the, the, the Harsey folder. But these are my five grill knives that I think you should try if you ever get the opportunity to do so. So, showing them all at once, I suppose we got the Spartan Acrobus. That's designed by Curtis Ivito. With the help of Chris Reeve and Kosi. The Grayman Satu. The Rick Hinder XM. 18 3.5 flipper and the magnum works pantheon those are my five knives that i would i would suggest you know like if you don't have grills that that uh that you could uh, shoot for you know i'm like these have all been very pleasurable to handle you know like none of them are my favorite no, you know, you know. Uh, full disclosure: none of them are my favorite knives, but they're they're great grail knives. They're they're you know, they're hard to get a hold of, or they're readily available. Di extremely discontinued. A little on the pricey side. Discontinued, like they're they're knives that aren't. Now you can buy four or five horses before you can pick up a good acrobus, you know. Because that they don't sell acrobuses anymore. Like there's there may be some websites that still have them, but more than likely it's going to be secondhand. Magnum Works. This thing was uh, built in 18, 17. This is an 18 knife, but they still make them. Battle Black is rare. I hear. Um, I'm. Uh, I don't know. I was I was shopping around. I couldn't find one for sale. Then I Nick said, uh, "Hey, they just dropped." some battle blacks on DLT trading and I got the message I went over there and they were all sold out um, yeah heavily discontinued since like 2019 I think very much still in production only so the Reeves and the Hinder are the only knives that I have uh, out here that are actually still in production I really would like to see Spartan revisit this and maybe do a redesign but what are my favorite knives for bonus I'll uh I'll throw out a couple of knives that I, I very much prefer over any of these. No cap, as the kids would say. 8015. And my shot is. And that that ain't no bullshit. You know, if I if I had to if I gotta leave the house for a whole week, it's gonna be a rough week. I know it's going to be a rough week and I need dependability in my pocket. It's going to be one of these. Man, it's just my two cents and I had a lot of fun. Oh, I got one more grill knife here. This is just a joke. My mom got me this knife when I was 10 years old. It's a Dracula dagger. From Franklin Mint. What about that? I think you can still pick these up. Um, from eBay. You know, for like 70, 80 bucks. Um, uh, as to believe that this is a real ruby. Gold plated. Silver. Or pewter. I don't know. It's supposed to have some silver in it. And the best still money can buy is German stainless. Made in China. And, uh, yeah, wouldn't cut a, wouldn't cut anything. But, anyway, so I would have knife on. I remember having a, <laughs> an infatuation with this knife in a finger hut magazine. It was, anyway. Um, so that's a joke. You guys have a good one, and we'll catch you on the flip side.